Patrick Zertan and Damari Mathis are expected to be the starting duo for the Denver Broncos at cornerback, but we asked the question, should they look at depth on the outside behind those guys in free agency? You get that and much more on today's brand new episode, Locked on Broncos. You are Locked on Broncos, your daily Denver Broncos podcast. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. What's happening, Broncos country? Welcome into a brand new episode of Locked On Broncos, your daily Denver Broncos podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. We just want to say thank you so much to everybody in Broncos country for tuning in and making Locked On Broncos your first listen of the day. Every single day you can get this podcast free and available everywhere you get your podcast in audio format or whether you watch on YouTube. Do us a favor, hit that subscribe or that follow button, comment on the YouTube video, like it for the algorithm, engage with other members in Broncos country. We appreciate you so much. This episode is brought to you by FanDuel Sportsbook, the official sportsbook partner of the NFL. Make every moment more. Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on today to get started. I'm your host as always, Cody Rourke, Broncos reporter from Mile High Sports. Joined alongside as always by my co-host and good friend, Sarah Bettinger. He's the site expert, predominantly orange.com. As we continue on our free agency preview, we're taking a look at in-house options for Denver. We're looking at positions. We're looking at depth. And now we've gravitated towards the cornerback position. There are a lot of storylines in-house and maybe reasons why the Broncos should look at cornerback depth in free agency. But I think it is important to note that we start the show off by saying, hey, the expectation, a lot of the conversation coming out of the NFL scouting combine Patrick Sertan and Damari Mathis are viewed as the two guys who are expected to start for the Broncos on the outside this upcoming season. So with that, I set the table. Cody, I'm excited for this because really you look at the cornerback position and maybe you see one of those rare spots on the roster where not a whole lot of tinkering needs to be done, at least in terms of your starters, right? I mean, Damari Mathis did step up in a big way. George Payton even told our good friends Ryan and Ben over there at 850KOA in an interview that he he did with them that they viewed Damari Mathis as a starting corner in this league. So he played well last season. I think he earned his spot in the starting lineup. Pat Sertan, obviously, we know not much needs to be said about him. Not sure how uh, how much more hyperbolic you can get. The dude is just a, an absolute superstar. So the Broncos have those spots locked up. But where you really have a question mark is like we're talking about here, the depth behind those two guys, specifically at the outside corner position. K1 Williams, he's back at the nickel spot this year, presumably. So, uh, well, he's under contract anyway, right? We're, we're not being super presumptive there, I think, just in terms of projecting. But Ronald Darby is the, is the big wild card here, Cody. Obviously missed a lot of time last year due to injury. Counts about uh, a little over $10 million against this year's salary cap. So his situation right now is the real question mark and the real wild card going into free agency. How confident are the Broncos in Damari Mathis as a starter? How confident are they that they could get somebody better than Ronald Darby at a better price or somebody as good at a better price if they do look to free agency? Well, I think if you don't look at free agency, because like you said, I think for me being a DB guy, I think you can look at cornerback here, and you look at all the players on the roster. I mean, if Denver, George Payton, Sean Payton, the scouting department, Vance Joseph, if they feel like, okay, hey, these guys have some developmental traits, and what I mean by what do you mean by these guys? I'm talking about guys like Jaquan McMillan, who we saw get a start in Week 18 against the Los Angeles Chargers, and he held his own against Mike Williams uh, when he was in the game before he had that back injury. I was thoroughly impressed with Jaquan McMillan. He was kind of those guys who came out of nowhere in a regular season finale and we had no expectation like okay what's he gonna look like and he exceeded expectations right but it is a small sample size you look at other guys on the roster still under contract Lamar Jackson who had to step in for Damari Mathis in the Kansas City Chiefs game after Damari went out with a concussion after tackling Travis Kelsey and I thought he did hit I thought he did a really good job held his own against Marquez Valdez Scantling on a couple plays had a pass breakup on Travis Kelsey himself he's long he's rangy he has you know I think developmental traits from a young guy, right? And I think if he can just sit and, and continue to be in a position room, as we know with Christian Parker, a guy who's proven 
to be good at developing cornerbacks even further. I like maybe not making a move here if you're the Broncos, unless you absolutely have to. And then you look at other guys who are on the practice squad or futures contracts. There's Delonte Hood, who's also got some size to him. He wears number 13, Michael Ojemudi, his old number. And then you have Fayon Hicks, who you drafted in last year's NFL draft late round pick. And he's also been a guy that is developing behind the course of things, you know, in that defensive back room. So everything is going to be predicated off of is Ronald Darby going to return in 2023? If not, maybe you look at a veteran option on the free agency market, someone that you can get on a vet minimum deal. Or if you're confident in these young guys that you have, you say, hey, we're going to roll with Patrick Sertan, Damari Mathis, and then we're going to roll with some of these young guys behind them. I think it's risky when you consider that Denver plays in the AFC West, but I'm eager for your thoughts on this. Well, it wouldn't hurt for the Broncos to have some veteran outside corner depth. I think when you look at the situation that they're in, it's going to be tough for them to go to free agents and say, hey, you know, here's a uh, here's a starting opportunity for you. Come and come and get it. I don't think really that's necessarily going to be the case. I think given the current situation on the roster elsewhere, you're really going into free agency and, and maybe asking somebody to come in as a cornerback number four or a cornerback number three at the very best and say, hey, you know, injuries happen. This has kind of been our situation. This is where we're at with our two young guys at the top. I don't know exactly where that leads you to, but I think that could lead you to some kind of bargains in the free agent market, right? We, we talk about cap casualties kind of a lot because you never know who's going to get let go and what they're, what opportunity they're going to be looking for. But obviously somebody like our old pal Bradley Roby in New Orleans with their financial situation, could he come back to Denver? Shaquille Griffin was just cut by the Jacksonville Jaguars, Cody. Another very interesting option as a cap casualty should have plenty of interest and that's the thing there's going to be teams looking for starting corners right so I just don't know exactly where you're going to find this valuable depth but I do think it's coming in the form of a veteran right you can't necessarily bank on uh, your two young guys being the end-all be-all at the position so that's where it's important to look for some coaching connections maybe some you know guys who had a down year in 2022 who might not be the most exciting free agent acquisitions, but maybe, you know, in 2020, 2021, maybe they were playing at a high enough level. And so it, it's, it's one of those situations where you maybe look to somebody on a one year deal here, like you said, close to the veteran minimum, somebody that could come in and play for you if need be, but also somebody that's maybe not the highest ranked on everybody's free agency list at the moment. When you mentioned Bradley Roby, I thought, I was like, oh, you know, because I know you and I talked about that, but then I realized Vance Joseph is the defensive coordinator, so I don't think that Bradley Roby will be coming back to Denver. I know things didn't necessarily go well with Vance and with Roby uh, when Vance was here as the head coach, but, you know, maybe maybe things have changed. Maybe time has passed and they're over it, and, and maybe that is an option there. We'll, we'll see how things pan out. It is worth noting that Denver does have a restricted free agent, the same Bassey, who I felt – did actually pretty well in terms of nickel depth behind K1 Williams when K1 missed some time last year. So maybe an, uh, another option to keep in house. But we're also going to take a look at maybe why the Broncos should not take a look at cornerback depth in free agency. We take a look at in house profiles on several guys on the roster, practice squad, and more. You're going to get that on today's episode, Lockdown Broncos. This episode of the show is brought to you by our friends at FanDuel Sportsbook. The midway point of the NBA season is here, and now is the perfect time to download FanDuel, America's number one sport. Sportsbook because new customers get a no sweat first bet up to $1,000 and that's bonus bets back if your first bet doesn't win. Just download the FanDuel Sportsbook app. It's safe, it's secure, and it's super easy to use and super easy to navigate and then you can bet on everything from the money line to point spreads, point scorers, three pointers drained in the game. Plus FanDuel even lets you combine your bets for a chance at a bigger payout with the same game parlay. So don't miss your chance to get a no sweat first bet up to $1,000 in bonus bets when you go to FanDuel.com slash locked on. That's FanDuel.com slash locked on to learn more. Make every moment more with FanDuel, an official sports betting partner of the NBA. Why should the Denver Broncos not take a look at free agent options at the cornerback position? We take a look at some of the profiles of some in-house guys on the roster, under contract, that can maybe make a case for Denver not to do that. Just want to say thank you so much to everybody in Broncos country. Thank you so much for watching us and listening to us and making us your first listen of the day. Every single day we have you covered 
all year long because for the true fan, there's never an off-season. Free agency frenzy is approaching. So make sure if you haven't subscribed or you're not following this podcast, make sure you do that right now because we'll have you covered every step of the way through free agency, the NFL draft, OTAs, mini camp, training camp, preseason, regular season, the whole shebang. You get it here. Lockdown Broncos, your team every day. Sarah, let's continue on with our conversation here looking at cornerbacks for the Denver Broncos, maybe why they shouldn't look at free agent options. We mentioned some of the names in-house under contract in the previous segment here, but I think it's time we take a little bit of a deeper dive, not even just like the in-house guys, but coming off the hills of the NFL scouting combine. We do know that Denver met with several cornerbacks uh, that are going to be in the NFL draft process. That is always an option, right? So if you don't look in free agency, you can always look in the NFL draft, but you and I, as we've been saying all week, with limited draft capital, it has to be the right move or has to be the right guy to do just that. You really do have to pay very close attention to that. I think that the defensive backfield has obviously been a very high priority for George Payton. And you can look back to some of his draft classes with through the years with the Minnesota Vikings when he was working alongside Rick Spielman, right? I mean, they constantly emphasize the defensive backfield in Minnesota, and he's done the same since he got to Denver in 2021, right? His very first pick was Pat Sertan. He went out in free agency and got Ronald Darby and Kyle Fuller. So 2022, you obviously bring in Damari Mathis. And, and it, so I think it's just, it's one of those things where cornerback position, they you know you can never have too many, right? Vic Fangio famously said there's 96 basically starting spots because you use three corners a lot in the NFL, and there's certainly not 96 guys out there. So the more players that you can pick in the draft, I think the better. And I do think it's probably safe to assume, hey, the Broncos are going to look to somebody in this class, this is considered a really good cornerback class in the NFL draft. So don't be surprised that the Broncos do invest. I know they have five picks right now, but I think they'll end up with more. And like you mentioned, they did visit with several corners at the combine. And it, it makes sense for them to use maybe maybe not their very first pick on a corner, but certainly somewhere within that mix of picks. It's always a smart and wise investment, as we've seen, you know, with Pat Sertan, as we've seen with Damari Mathis. And I think that George Payton's going to try to continue that streak here in 2023. Let's take a look at some guys. We mentioned Jaquan McMillan, now initially an undrafted rookie free agent, a guy that we were, you know, quite frankly, watching in training camp. And I was like, okay, you know, this is a guy who's a camp body, wasn't getting much run with the second team, was really kind of staying with that third team defense and was able to kind of stay on the practice squad. Like, you know, initially was cut, and then he was brought back onto the roster, uh, the practice squad roster, once the season began. And I think a lot of us were wondering, okay, is this a guy that you feel like can develop into becoming a special teams player for you, right? And I don't think we ever imagined initially, considering where the season was going for Denver, that we'd ever see Jaquan McMillan play in the regular season. And I tell you what, when it was announced that he was going to get the start, against the Chargers, who are playing their starters, the Justin Herberts, the Keenan Allens, the Mike Williams. I, I was like, okay, hey, I think they're going to go after him. They tried, and he held his own, and he got robbed of an interception. I, clear as day, I don't know how, even when they went to replay, they didn't overturn that into becoming an interception, but, man, he got robbed, and tell you what, he played his tail off, and it was kind of exciting, a great way to end the season for a young guy, some confidence going into a brand-new coaching staff into a 90-man roster heading into training camp eventually. It's exciting for the Broncos to have another prospect like that. I remember at East Carolina, the dude was an All-American, just constantly making plays on the ball. I think another main reason, Cody, why maybe you don't look to free agency for some depth at the cornerback position, I guess it's tough to say don't look there at all. I'm sure the Broncos will. But maybe in terms of you know higher priced guys, especially, is because this free agent class just really isn't all that great, you know. Unless the Broncos are going to go after Byron Murphy, who was part of that first draft class in 2019 with the Cardinals when Vance Joseph got there to be their defensive coordinator. Unless you're going to go for a, a big name like that and say, hey, we're going to play Murphy in the nickel, we're going to let Kwan Williams go, we're going to have this top three of Murphy and Damari Mathis and Pat I hope Sertan. they don't do that to be honest with you I like I thought came on balled yeah. out I'm you know I think you have to have an I insurance policy but yeah it's kind of crazy to think K1 got that interception now that we're talking about him against the Jaguars right remember he, he was basically had the you know the club on his hand that he looked like he was out there like a cyborg or something he gets that interception but Jaquan McMillan's you know, gets overturned, but I digress. I think that it's certainly a situation right here, Cody, where this free agent class just 
it's not all that great. You know, I'm looking at some of the top names here and I just don't see a situation that's like, oh yeah, that could, that could be a really good value for the Denver Broncos in terms of their current situation. Like I said, in, in the first segment, you're going to have to sell a veteran free agent corner on this idea that you may not be the, the starter on the outside, which is maybe where, depending on how much money you're trying to spend, maybe you do just keep Ronald Darby and take your chances. I mean, I'm not opposed to that. Like I said, I thought Ronald Darby was playing really good football, but I think the the bigger thing is we've pointed out here is his cap hit this upcoming season. He could be approached to restructure. I mean, that could be something that is on the table. He does have one more year left on his deal. But also, coming off of an ACL, you have a lot of questions, right? We always say, hey, temper your expectations for a guy who's coming off of injury. I know he's been going through the rehab process. To my understanding, it's gone really well for him. I imagine he'll probably be limited to start training camp potentially. He could be ready to go. It really just depends on if he's hit any set, you know, snags or setbacks in his uh, you know, rehab process. I don't I don't think that's the case. I think things have progressed really well for Darby. But I mean, Denver's got a lot of guys coming off of an ACL regardless this upcoming season. Darby is a good player, but can you bank on the fact that if you envision Damari Mathis and Patrick Sertan as your starters, can you you know, pay a guy that much money to not start for you? Or could you maybe, if you transition to a more of a dime look, can you play a guy like Damari Mathis or Ronald Darby inside the slot opposite of Kwan Williams and have everybody out there? I mean, I, I don't know what the plan is yet. I'm, I'm eager to see if we're going to get a press conference with Vance Joseph at some point to talk about maybe what his scheme may look like, though he won't give us too many details on that because competitive advantages and reasons, I understand that. But outside of that, another guy too, Lamar Jackson we talked about. No, not the Lamar Jackson that is set you know, to potentially leave Baltimore. Lamar Jackson, the cornerback who we've talked about, I think a couple of years ago, we talked about him on this podcast in terms of maybe a draft prospect when we were going through the whole process. He's got great size to him. He's got great length, and he can play the outside cornerback position. But I also feel like, Sarah, he gives you a, a value on the special team side of things. I think he could emerge as one of your core four players on that special teams unit, which, as we know, is going to be big. I think he's in a good position. Now, for him, like when I first saw him, and that Kansas City Chiefs game, I was like, man, Chris Harris Jr. got taller. Uh, he's kind of got the same like frame rate, but he's taller than him. And I, I thought he made several good plays in the ball, good fundamentals, good technique. And there's a reason that the Broncos picked him up and he was able to get some run here. He, you know, he finished the season on the active roster. I'm not opposed to maybe even see what you have with him as well. Maybe he's your third or fourth option. I think it's a good idea, right? You take some shots on guys like this. You never know what's going to emerge. You know, That's one thing I think that gets often overlooked in terms of roster construction during the offseason. Like, there's always going to be some type of wild card player on the roster somewhere that really blows the coaching staff away in practices or, ha you know, wins OTAs or wins training camp, wins the preseason, right? Those players come out of nowhere all the time and seemingly nowhere, right? But obviously, if you're locked into Locked On Broncos, we're talking about them here in March. So just uh, file that one away. If Jaquan McMillan or Lamar Jackson, they come out this offseason and they just blow the coaching staff away, look, I don't know. Believe it or not, players can improve, right? They can get better. They can yes, get, they, they can, can work hard and get an opportunity and go out there and blow a coaching staff away. You don't always have to use your top draft pick on a certain position. You don't always have to use your biggest free agent dollars at a certain position. You know, not everybody on your roster is going to be a 99 overall on Madden. Unless, I, I, I mean, Cody, have you ever had that happen unless you're like, 25 years deep in a franchise mode or something <laughs> no it, it just doesn't happen <laughs> right so you, you're not going to get 99 overall everywhere you're not going to get the high price free agent to take a discount to come play for the mile high city i think the broncos may have to rely on some of their young guys taking that next step again under one of the best talent developers on the coaching staff and christian parker and if denver wins the super bowl then maybe that conversation about people flocking to the mile high city changes i mean but you're gonna have to do a lot and you're gonna cover a lot of ground in order to do that broncos country we're always eager for your thoughts which is why we asked you your thoughts on the broncos cornerback situation we're gonna share some of the best responses that we got on social media you'll get that on today's episode of the show just want to tell you real quick make sure you check out the locked on nuggets podcast hosted by 
Adam Adamadas and Matt Moore. The Denver Nuggets are the number one seed in the Western Conference, and they're playing cohesive team basketball. They have a really good team culture. Adam Adamadas and Matt Moore bring you behind the scenes with all the pick and roll action on Nikola Jokic, Jamal Murray, Michael Porter Jr., Aaron Gordon, and your Denver Nuggets, the Locked On Nuggets podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Broncos country always has some interesting thoughts as it pertains to roster moves and personnel, which is why we're going to share them on today's episode of the show. We just wanted to say thank you so much to everybody in Broncos country for tuning in and making us your first listen of the day every single day. Sarah, let's open up the floor to our avid listeners in Broncos country. And just a reminder, if you ever want to get involved in the conversation, always make sure you have notifications turned on for me at Cody Work NFL or Sarah at Sarah Bettinger, because when we put out prompts and questions, you have a chance to answer and we will feature the best ones here on the show. We do get a lot of responses and unfortunately we can't include every single response. We just want to say we appreciate all the interaction and the engagement that Broncos Country provides to us here on the show. You all make the show exactly what it is. We're very fortunate to be able to just talk about it with all of you. So with that said, kind of talking about the cornerback position, this kind of been our series this week where we talk about maybe te- why the team should look at a position in free agency, why they shouldn't, and then we ask the fans how they feel about that specific position. Let's start things off with at Yeet Moot on Twitter. He says, uh, in terms of cornerback, depends on what they do with Darby. Would prefer to go after a guy that gets cut if we're losing Draymond and Dalton Reisner for comp pick purposes. If Darby stays at cheap depth, day three pick. I mean, what are your thoughts on what Yeet Moot had to say? I think he's on to something, right? I think definitely if you want to play the comp pick game, Cody, you certainly don't want to go after, like we talked about, any of these high, you know, high price free agents, which there's not many out there anyway that I think are going to command a ton of money. One of the guys that may command a ton of money, I mean, relatively speaking, considering maybe the best free agent corners in this market are Jamel Dean, James Bradbury. Uh, one of the guys that could command some money is from our good friend Zombie 21, you know, who pointed out Shaquille Griffin again, noting here, if they're playing the comp pick game, right? If they are playing the comp pick game, Cody, it does make sense to go after somebody else out there on the market who is certain, you know, cut by another team. And I, and Shaquille Griffin is somebody who's had a couple of down years with the Jaguars, little bit overshadowed by the emergence there of Tyson Campbell I think definitely that's a name to watch for here if the comp pick formula is something the Broncos really care about which we know if they're letting Draymond Jones hit free agency that doesn't mean they won't re-sign him but they're going to let him test the market same is true of Dalton Reisner if those two guys Cody can sign for upwards of 12 to 13 million per year for Reisner maybe 17 to 20 million for Draymond Jones the Broncos could be in line for third and fourth round compensatory picks next year, depending on what else they would choose to do in free agency themselves. That is the gamble of being a GM and evaluating. Is this good for us right now or is it better for us in the future? That's an interesting thing to throw out there. Packy Dermy on Twitter says, oh, I think it's at Packy Derm on Twitter. My bad. My apologies. I'm butchering that the first time. Honestly, I can't tell. We will see. He says either they rework Darby's contract or they have to sign someone. Vance needs guys that play in zero coverage. And I mean, yeah, you need guys who can play man-to-man coverage. But I think it goes back to what George Payton said with their good friends, Benjamin Albright and Ryan Edwards. They believe that they have two guys in Damari Mathis and Patrick Sertan who can play man-to-man coverage. I mean, they have the skill set and the ability to do just that. Damari was used to it at Pitt. I mean, he was playing press man-to-man coverage. You know, in the NFL, sometimes you have to transition. You know, you'll do a little bit of press, but then you have to transition to playing some off-man coverage, which, in my opinion, is one of the hardest things to do. I know there's some people in the Denver media... I don't even want to call them media in a sense because all they are is hot take artists. But they say that cornerback was like the fifth hardest position to play in football. Like, get over yourself. It's one of the toughest positions to play in the game. That and quarterback, those are the two top positions there. Being at a disadvantage while playing off-man coverage while having to figure out what type of route the receiver, who already knows where he's going, that is so tough. It is one of the most demanding positions in the game. I had to rant about that. But yeah, Vance does need guys who can play man-to-man coverage. And I think they got two of those guys with Damari. They also have it with Sertan. And, and you know what? I even think they have that with Ronald Darby as well, who is playing pretty good. So maybe you have to evaluate here. Do we stay put with what we had last year, just another year? 
just another year. Yeah, I think that's exactly where kind of I'm at with this whole situation. I think, you know, Blue Ridge Bronco, good friend Gabe there on Twitter, always uh, just one of the greatest friends there on Broncos Twitter that you could that you could make. He wonders younger slot option, maybe. I mean, so obviously he's saying I- I'm OK with kind of where things are at as well with what you and I have been talking about, Cody. Uh, he says Sidney Jones is a thought. I liked what I saw from Lamar Jackson. So shout out to to Blue Ridge there for being in on Lamar Jackson as well as a longer boundary type of guy, but a smaller, quicker guy is what he's suggesting. Somebody younger than than thirty one, which I I get, I understand that you want to get a free agent that has a couple years of longevity there, whether through free agency or the draft. I, I think that's absolutely a good status of where the cornerback position is at. It's like, man, do you want to add some outside depth? Or do you trust a guy like Lamar Jackson to do some more of that this coming season? Maybe Jaquan McMillan. Do you go to the draft, Cody, for somebody that could potentially be a nickel corner for you going forward? I think that's another interesting thought to ponder as well because that's that's something the Broncos could need after this year. Like you said, planning a little bit for the future. Kwan Williams will be a free agent after the 2023 season, so we'll see what they decide to do. But I like the idea of kind of just going after maybe another slot to be depth for you behind K1 Williams. I mean, you need it. And look, I applaud K1 Williams for playing through all the injuries he played through last year. Like you mentioned, the club, he had a he had a hand issue. I don't know if he had a broken bone in his hand, but he played through it all season long and waited till after the season to get it operated on. He had a meniscus operation, and usually those hold you out four to six weeks. He came back in two weeks from that to be able to play for Denver. I mean, that's how he's a tough dude, man. The high pain threshold and tolerance there for him. I, I like what he's been able to do, especially against the run. But I do think, yes, you have to look at getting another option, whether you bring a Sang Bassey back or whether you look in the draft or whether you look in free agency. You need someone who can also play coverage, but also play against the run, which is going to be crucial if Denver plays in a little bit more than dime sets this upcoming season. We just want to say thank you so much to everybody in Broncos country. Thanks for sharing your responses on today's episode of the show, sharing your thoughts on the cornerback position. Make sure you drop them in the YouTube comment section down below. Or if you're listening to our favorite audio podcasting platform, make sure you tweet us on Twitter at Cody Work NFL, at Sarah Bettinger, at Lockdown Broncos. We're always looking forward to hearing from all of you in Broncos country. Tomorrow's a big one as we take a look at the wide receiver position where Denver has some guys coming back from injury, but Denver could also look to maybe add They've already added a wide receiver, and there are some rumors about Cortland Sutton that we want to talk about. You'll get that on tomorrow's episode, Locked on Broncos.